What up, this is Patrick Hayes. Welcome to my YouTube channel. On this channel, I help you find your greatest self so that you can be your greatest you. Now in this video, what I would like to talk about is how to stay high vibe while you are going through your dark night of the soul. This was something that was asked in one of the comments a couple months back. Somebody asked me to make a video on how to stay high vibe when that spiritual crisis, that dark night of the soul is going on and you are breathing and you are spinning and you are in the turmoil of that experience. Because all of us that are on the spiritual path eventually run into this dark night of the soul. We have this really deep, heavy spiritual crisis kind of like experience. And it's really important for us to be able to stay stabilized and stay balanced as we're moving through this so that we can actually make it to the other side without, say, re-traumatizing ourselves or spiraling down or losing our momentum and taking the wrong path. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about here is faith or trust. Faith and trust that this dark night is something that is worth moving through. It's something that is worth not giving up for, right? that actually everything is going to be okay and we're going to be all right. And these trials that we're going through, this dark night of the soul, is actually something that in the end, we will be glad happened and will make sense why it happened. And it will actually fuel our spiritual development and add to our greater experience of ourselves and of our evolution. But finding this faith, having this trust, is sometimes a little bit difficult when we don't know what's actually happening. The way that I like to describe it is that there's a certain point in our development where it's very important for us to be able to find the light within us, find the light deep inside of us and bring that light forward. And on a certain part of our path, in order for us to really truly find the divine within us and bring that forward, we need to be in circumstances and situations where there is no light in a sense outside of us. In other words, we run into a series of trials and tribulations in our life where it's very hard to see hope or beauty or a purpose or joy coming from outside sources where normally we would find inspiration by drawing upon the energies of some external thing or some external source. We're forced to go within and find that light within us. See, in the beginning stages of spiritual development, um, essentially what happens is we become tuned in to higher vibrations and recognize these higher vibrations as being our true essence. But a lot of these things are coming from outside sources. So whether we're watching inspiring videos, whether it's certain music, whether um, certain beings came to us and gave us some sort of energetic upgrade, whether it's different information that we're starting to digest or books that we're reading that light us up and we say, yes, yes, that's it. This is more in alignment with who I am and I'm gonna move towards that, right? And this is extremely beneficial because it helps us tune in with what that true nature is and start embedding those vibrations into our greater being. But at a certain point, oftentimes what happens is we need to be able to self-source, right? We need to be a free energy device and we need to not be so dependent on external high vibrational energies to light us up. So what happens is we go through this kind of spiritual trial, this dark night of the soul, where all of the external reflections stop showing us this high vibration and basically it's inspiring us to bring it forth regardless of the external circumstances. And basically that is the trial. Your spiritual guides, your, um, your angels, your different extraterrestrial counterparts, they will in a sense withdraw and say, okay, now it's your turn to bring this forward on your own. You've had enough experience figuring out what the vibrations are that you choose to resonate as, now it's your choice to bring that forward regardless of the external circumstances. So it might feel very dark. This is like the dark night, like your soul feels alone. It feels like it doesn't have any support. But actually, this is an amazing opportunity for you to find that within yourself and bring that forward and then you become the light and then you're not dependent on external sources of high vibe stuff but you're actually the source of the high vibe. Now, one thing that I wanna say is that staying high vibe does not mean that you don't feel pain or that things aren't difficult or that you don't have sad feelings or emotions of feeling distraught or upset, okay? Staying high vibe is getting in tune with the grounded peace that persists through all of those different trials and emotions, okay? so. If you think that staying high vibe 
through your dark night of the soul means you're gonna be happy throughout the whole process, well, that's a delusion, right? So get off of that and don't get stuck on that idea. Staying high vibe through the dark night of the soul means you've gotten in touch with a certain courage, a certain persistence, and a certain peace, and a certain trust that in the face of the emotional swells that come up and the negative feelings and the troubles that you go through, you have some sort of sturdy groundedness in that true light and that true essence that gives you the strength to carry on in a courageous way. You know, a really simple example that's kind of metaphoric that makes more sense like in the physical world is the idea of a primal cue. If you've ever heard of what a primal cue is, there's a book called The Talent Code where it talks about the, the different things that really inspire somebody to greatness. And one of them is called a primal cue. And so they had done a lot of studies with all sorts of different um, really talented people that have succeeded a lot in, um, all, in all sorts of different fields. And what they found was that there was a commonality amongst many of them. And this commonality was that there was some sort of primal cue that was inspiring them to take action and move forward in life. And a primal cue is basically like, they lived in some sort of impoverished neighborhood. Um, they lost uh, like a, a parent early on. Some sort of situation where if they didn't take responsibility for themselves, then their future looked very bleak. You see this actually really commonly um, when say like a child lives with their parents for a really long period of time and they can't get their act together. But then at a certain point, the parent's like, okay, you know what? You're gonna have to do it on your own. And they cut the child off and this is a primal cue. Now the child's like, oh no, well mommy and daddy aren't gonna take care of me anymore. I better get my act together. And then they start going for it. And all of a sudden it brings forth the lion in them. They become more powerful. So it's very much like this, but on a spiritual level, right? So our spiritual guides are like our parents and they're saying, okay, we've trained you enough. We've entrained you to the vibration enough. And now we're gonna step back and we're gonna let you become your more powerful self. Okay, so that gives a greater understanding of what's happening here, right? Which changes the context a little bit. And it creates an opportunity out of this seemingly bleak experience to become a, a major teacher for us, right? And it's the next step in our initiation, so it's actually something to be quite um, excited in one sense to be experiencing, because this means that you're stepping into a greater, more powerful version of yourself. Okay, so the next thing I wanna talk about is maybe you're at the point now where you're saying, okay, so I get it, the dark night of the soul is an opportunity for me to grow my internal light. I get that, and I understand the idea of a primal cue. Maybe it's it requires a must in order for me to activate this light, right? So it's creating an environment, this initiation is creating an environment where there's a must for me to activate my internal light. That makes sense, but how do I actually really trust this? How do I have the faith to really ride the cloaked unicorn? What I mean by this, the metaphor for riding the cloaked uniform is that, unicorn is that the unicorn is a unicorn. It's taking you to this beautiful like fairyland of, of enlightenment, right? This amazing place that is like far beyond what you could imagine, but it's cloaked. You don't know it's actually a unicorn, right? Anything could be under there. So how do you have faith that you are riding the unicorn? All it really requires is for you to spend some time meditating and contemplating on the idea that hardships are a blessing in disguise. And for anybody that's actually overcome a hardship, it becomes quite obvious that that hardship gave them some sort of gift in some sort of way, right? And if you feel like there's been a particular hardship that you haven't gotten a gift from, then what that means essentially is that you haven't really gotten over it, that you still have a resentment about it, or it's still like a trauma that you haven't healed in your life, right? Because actually after you heal anything, after you heal from any sort of hardship, there's some gift that you receive from that. So when you think back on your life, and you think back on all those difficult things that you've overcome, and then the fruits that you've received from overcoming them, it becomes quite clear to you that hardships are blessings in disguise. In a sense, this holographic mirror that we live in is essentially one big um, giant puzzle that gives us all these upgrades by going through different trials. And every time we overcome a particular trial or hardship, and we get stronger, right? And eventually we start changing our relationship to trials and hardships and realizing that these are lessons that are actually bearing gifts for us. So 
when we can change our perspective on that, then even though this situation that we might be in, this dark night of the soul is really difficult, we can actually have faith that it is going to bring us gifts in the future. And we can have that faith based off of the contemplations and the meditations that we've done in remembering all of the hardships that we've experienced and the gifts that came from those hardships. And I'm serious, like actually take the time to sit and go over this. You know, a lot of us, we kind of go through the motions in our mind, like, oh, I know this is a blessing in disguise. I know that this is going to serve me, but we don't actually sit and contemplate it and get into the meditative state regarding this perception and really integrate it to the point where we can still feel the light of that in the face of those situations. It's one thing to be able to say it when we're feeling good, but then how often do people then respond in a completely contradictory way to that belief or that knowing when they're in the face of some sort of hardship? And honestly, if you take the time to sit down when you're in a you know more or less good feeling state, right? And you go through the process of remembering those hardships and then truly developing gratitude for the hardships because of the blessings that they've given you by really contemplating it and realizing like, where would you be if you didn't have these different hardships that came up? Like how much weaker would you be? What are all the blessings that wouldn't be in your life and in your spiritual development if you hadn't gone through what you've gone through? And then truly developing gratitude for those things. When you do this, this really amplifies your capacity to see hardships in the present moment as blessings in disguise and then to treat them that way. And in a sense, you could think of it as like, all problems, all hardships are blessings in disguise. And the trick of the game is to strip the disguise off the blessing before the disguise fools you. Because when a disguise fools you, then you go down another parallel dimension timeline where that hardship or that drama or whatever it is becomes a tragedy, right? But you can make it a triumph if you don't respond to it as a tragedy, but you look for the opportunity there, because this is how the holographic mirror works, right? It's gonna work in resonance with where you're at. So when you're approached with something that seems like, oh, this is the dark night of the soul, I don't know what to do, I'm lost, this is terrible, maybe I have no connection to light, maybe I'm never gonna find my way out of this. When you start vibrating at that space and you don't have that internal knowing, you don't have that internal faith, you don't have that internal courage, then you might very well create that negative timeline reality for yourself. So tune into that knowing that's inside of you because you know that you've been through many hardships that have resulted in you growing and becoming stronger. So this is just the next level of that. The dark night of the soul is one of the most powerful and profound opportunities for you to grow your internal essence to the point that the external reality can no longer divert your path and you can move more directly to your true essence and true expression in your life. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Like, subscribe. If this video was useful for you or you think that it might be useful for somebody else that might be going through their dark night of the soul, please share this video with them. I would love for anybody that could find benefit from this video to have access to it. So again, thanks for tuning in. This is Patrick Hayes and I will talk to you next time. One love.